I'm Mark. Uh, I work at Development Seed, and uh, I'm going to be talking about OSM Teams. Who here has heard of OSM Teams? Just go right out. Okay, you. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, what it is. It's an application that we built at Development Seed. We we had a need for it, so uh, why we built it, why it's a uh, version two right now. Then uh, Jennings, who uh, we all know, is going to talk about how Youth Mappers uses OSM Teams. And then we're going to talk about what's next for this application. So why OSM Teams or what is OSM Teams? We have this very specific need um, with a partner that we were working with that wanted to connect an internal app for analytics on o OSM software. Um, well, they were building OSM software internally and they wanted to connect uh, their internal tasking manager with you know, stats and leaderboards and they wanted to manage their community of users and have it in the tasking manager, which, all, which has groups and teams, but also have teams that have leaderboards and badges and uh, and so on. And they didn't want to do the work twice. Ideally, this should be in the OSM software, managing groups, managing teams. And ideally, OSM teams shouldn't exist. But we had to build this central software, central API, that can feed into those two applications. If you think about OSM, the tagging system, everything is like a key value store, right? You've got the, uh, you know, the points and ways and relations. You can add tags, but there's nothing for users. What if you could add metadata to user objects or users can add tags about other users? You could group them into interest groups. You could say, I'm an expert in this or that. Uh, we have hashtags, but it's just a hack on top of the OSM, uh, you know, on, on top of OSM chain sets. So we went out to build this social glue between the apps. There's many apps that were presented in this conference and OSM has a very, uh, you know, they, they don't talk to each other. This is where OSM team can come in. So OSM teams is just getting people off of spreadsheets and onto lists and adding tags to those users. I'll give some examples in a bit. If you are a community manager, this is great. You don't have to have a spreadsheet of users anymore. You just put them in OSM Teams, and then ideally, an application like the Task Manager can read those teams and then work with that team, or OSM Cha or MapRoulette. Uh, so, if you're creating a team for an event like State of the Map, you could do it on OSM Teams. If you're an organized editing team, um, Jennings gave a talk about corporate editing teams and statistics of, you know, how they've mapped over the years, but there was no one place to like see the list of users. This was a good use case for OSM teams to see what that list of users is. If you are a large editing team, like development seeds data team, for example. And I'm not going to go into the details of the architecture, but it's very simple. We have you log in with OSM. We wrap it in something called OAuth, but I won't bore you with it. And we attach metadata to that login. And then that's a very portable thing from app to app to app where we can expose the tags and the memberships of that OSM ID like if you are part of this team or part of this interest group and what is your profile? And we can put it in all 
you know, all the different apps that implement the OSM Teams API. This is what it looks like. Um, you can go to mapping.team right now, it's live. You can explore teams that have already been created, but uh, you can also wait for Jennings to talk about how Youth Mappers uses OSM Teams. And it's a 2.0 talk. We gave this talk four years ago when it was a simple website and it was just uh, create a new team and add members to this team. But what did we improve in the past four years? We improved the tagging system. So we have this new feature called organizations. So like Youth Mappers is a big organization and it has teams of teams. And then you can attach per team attributes. Like maybe you want to say in one team that your favorite color is red, but in another team, your favorite color is blue. I don't know why you would do that, but that is possible. Uh, we improve the UI. We have this notion of flares or badges. So if you're an organization, you can uh, say that these members are staff or these members are experts in this particular, uh, uh, you know, particular attribute. We implemented join links. I'm going to show you a join link in a bit, and then you could join the state of the map attendees team, and uh, we optimize it for contribution. It is an open source project. If you're a developer, if you're an app developer, you can help uh, build OSM teams, or you can help integrate with OSM teams. Here's a few slides on uh, what it looks like. This is what a team looks like. Uh, team members, teams come out, have a location. This is what your profile looks like within the team. Again, these tags are uh, have visibility within the team, so they can be private only for that team. Uh, and they're really, you can add any tag you want, right? So you can create these. Uh, so we are already, we have some tags predefined, but you can add more tags for a team itself. And same with a user. So in this team called OSM, uh, developer, OSM Teams Developers, I added an attribute called the GitHub, uh, GitHub name and preferred code language. This is what an organization looks like. You can have a map of all the teams within your organization. And the organization staff members and their different roles and all the organization members, which is just a join of all the members within all the teams in that organization. Uh, so I'm going to hand it over to Jennings. He's part of the steering committee committee and youth mappers and no, yeah, you are. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> He's going to talk about how, how they use, uh, some teams. Cool. Thanks, Mark. Um, so a couple of years ago, uh, saw Mark presented you some teams 1.0 and I showed him some spreadsheets, uh, like a thousand usernames on them, like of all of the youth mappers. Um, and I said, I think OSM teams can be really good for this, but I had all these other columns that were, you know, gender, age, um, all this information we didn't necessarily want to put into OSM profiles, um, that we needed to have some kind of privacy and, uh, control over. So uh, we've been working um, with DevSeed um, and sponsoring the development of, uh, of this version 2.0 to get all these attributes uh, that we need. So uh, this is the organization page for youth members. Um, I think there's something along where we'd like 260 chapters and you can see all the locations there. Um, these were the requirements. We needed to be able to track membership over hundreds of chapters. And we also want to collect basic demographic information and contact information, and most importantly, the OSM username. So OSM usernames are case sensitive. That's tricky. That's a real tricky one. When you ask people just to submit their OSM username in like Google form, uh, you have to do some uh, fuzzy matching to see if that's actually going to going to work. Um, and we need different levels of privacy depending on the attribute because we don't want to use. We want this to be a one stop place for the students to organize themselves as well as submit kind of their information. And so in the past, this has been a Google form. Uh, Marcel has driven like annual uh, chapter reports to get all this information back from users. So 
Um, and at the end of the day, this is the most important. Membership decisions belong to the chapter, not to Youth Mapper's headquarters. We shouldn't be in charge of these spreadsheets of who's in a student chapter. We want to give this power to the students and how they're doing their mapping um, and let them decide uh, who is a member of their, of their chapter. So this is what a page looks like for uh, youth mappers. Uh, this is one chapter. Um, we have kind of some basic information at the top. You can see there's the uh, join link. And this is a private join link that's required. And so the chapter moderator um, can send out this join link to members of their chapter. And that's how they join. And that's how they join the team. And when they click on that, they're asked to enter uh, their information. Um, yeah, we have all these great features, badges, um, links out to other OSM tools. Uh, here's an example of my profile. Um, so we have like gender, perform, graduation date, hometown, um, contact info. We're able to see this because I'm logged in, I took the screenshot, but all of these, or the majority of these are poorly private attributes. And so really we're using this also as a form basically to collect information from, from students. Um, and have made very clear privacy policy at the beginning when you log in um, that we're collecting this information. So only Marcella and I can see this for our uh, kind of annual reporting. And at the end of the day, the whole reason we're doing this is because it's just an API. So I can make an API call here um, and get back a list of OSM user IDs. And that was really the most important part because we're just trying to track how much the, uh, the students are editing, where they're editing, what they're editing. And so we use all that to power um, our activity dashboard uh, and track our metrics uh, for youth mappers. So um, yeah, that's how we're using version two. It's been awesome. Thank you. Uh, version two is great. Youth mappers has added over 200 chapters. And uh, what do we do with, with all these uh, themes? The, the ideal thing is we can integrate into let's say the task manager or OSM Cha, Map Roulette, and be uh, a one-stop sync for all these different groups. And so that has started. Uh, tasking manager has a PR where if you're creating a team on the tasking manager, you can sync with OSM teams and you select, you can, you, you can sync with the API, and then it will bring your team directly into the task manager. It's in review already. Uh, we're looking to integrate with uh, Map Roulette and OSM Cha is already in the works. And if you are interested in working with the OSM Teams API, we have two example apps, one in Python, one in Node, and a uh, fun little labs one that we did called OSM Teams Chat that I brought up for today so that you can try it out. So this is what... Oh, sorry. Wait, here you go. <laughs> Thank you. You got it? All right. Keep your phone out because there's more links coming. <laughs> All right. Chat.mapping.team. I'm gonna uh I'm gonna keep this one out uh up for, for the duration of the conference because it actually we built it in a way that's not very efficient and uh, it's gonna burn uh, my personal credit card. So, <laughs> so uh, this chat, if you make a team on OSM or join an OSM team, then you can chat with other users. To do that, I'm gonna bring a link up and you can join the state of the map attendees team for free. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps, not you. Uh, so what's the roadmap for OSM teams? More integrations and hopefully more organizations that see that's uh, the, the benefit of just having you know community groups just put in this sync synchronized uh, API that um, we can build build this thing together and have all these communities managed in one place. Uh, there you go, QR code, join the team. Right now, I'm gonna keep it up for like a minute or less, I don't, I don't, I don't have a lot of time, but um, you guys got it? 
All right, one second before questions. I have to put this slide, it's required. Join our team or build something with us. Add development.